Between 1400 and 1900, close to 20 million individuals were captured from Africa. By 1800, it is reported that Africa's population was half of what it would have been at this trait of enslaved Africans not occurred. Any documentary about the defeat of slave trade in present-day Nigeria and Africa at large that does not include the mention of valiant African men who fought against all odds is outrightly incomplete. One of those valiant men is King Jaja of Okobo. Jaja of Okobo was regarded as a smart political and military strategist whose impact is quite enormous in the fight against slavery in Nigeria. Who is Jaja of Okobo? He was the first king of Okobo. He was the founder of Okobo City State in present-day River State of Nigeria. He was a former slave who worked his way out of slavery. Born in Umuduroa Amaibu in the present-day Imo State in the year 1821, his actual birth name is unknown and also the identity of his true parents. The Igbo land in the 1800s was in chaos as it saw Europeans invade the land for slaves in exchange for firearms, tobacco, bullets. Black slave raiders were invading different regions and selling Igbos to slavery. After he was kidnapped and taken to Boni Island, River State, Jaja was renamed Jubo Juboga by his first master and later is sold to Chief Alali, the head of the Okobu Manila group of houses. It was here that the British, who couldn't pronounce his name, gave him the name Jaja. From the 15th to the 18th century, Okobo, like the other city-states, gained its wealth from the profits of slave trade. This thriving business was enough to make one rich as well as give him popularity. However, the abolition of the slave trade in 1807 was supplanted by the trade in palm oil. Palm oil in itself was so vibrant that the region was named the Oil River State. As shield in business and politics, Jaja became the head of the Anapepo House, extending its activities and influence by absorbing other houses, increasing operations in the interland and augmenting the number of European contacts. Later on, a power struggle would ensue among rival factions in the houses of Boni. Led by the Pepo House's high chief, Chief Okojundo, leading to the breakaway of the faction led by Jaja. He established a new settlement which he named Okobo in 1869, where he became King Jaja of Okobo. This new status saw him declare himself independent of Boni. Okobo soon dominated the region's lucrative palm oil trade and became home to 14 of what were formerly Boni's 18 trade houses. Part of this success is attributed to the fact that Jaja made moves to block the access of British merchants to the interior, giving him an effective monopoly. At times, Okobo even shipped palm oil directly to Liverpool, independent of British middlemen. Apart from the fact that he was a wealthy merchant and a very diplomatic man, he was also a man of honor and power. This is exemplified when he aided the Queen of England in a battle in the Gold Coast, the Ashanti War, and was awarded a sword of honor for Queen Victoria in 1871. As time went on, the oil trade business in Okobo land began to expand and the ambitions of the Europeans to dominate this market grew, thus creating a conflict between Jaja and the British top sales and business tycoons, one of whom was John Oat of Liverpool. While Jaja evaded attempts by Oat to penetrate Jaja's market in Kwa Ibo River, Liverpool members of the African Association were pressing for strong action against Jaja 
over what they described as falling rates of profits. In the course of national interest, King Jaja dealt severe blows on the Kwa Ibo people in 1881. He raided about seven of their villages, captured many, and executed about 100 people for engaging in direct trade with the Europeans. Even when the British came up with funny tricks and laws to have thrown Jaja in the quest of control of the oil region, like a game of chess, he always checkmated them, and these angered the British more. At the 1884 Berlin Conference, however, the other European powers designated Okubo as a British territory and the British soon moved to claim it. When Jaja refused to seize taxing British traders, Henry Hamilton Johnston, a British vice consul invited Jaja to negotiation in 1887. By September of 1887, John brought a warship named HMS Goshok to Okobo and invited Jaja on board. He assured Jaja that nothing will happen to him. When he went on board, he was given two bad choices by Johnson. One was that if he would not allow the Europeans access, he could go back and face immediate bombardment from the British Navy and the other that he goes into exile. Jaja being a man of strong values and principles chose not to back down. The British arrested him and tried him in Accra, in Gold Coast, now Ghana, then took him to London for some time, where he met Queen Victoria and was a guest in Buckingham Palace. No one knew what transpired between him and the Queen, but after some time, he was finally deported to the West Indies. While in exile in the Caribbean, his presence was alleged to be the cause of immense civil unrest among the people of Barbados. After years of campaigning for his freedom, Jaja was moved to the island of São Vicente, Cape Verde, off the coast of West Africa, to prevent the possibility of a revolt. Jaja eventually won his liberty after years of fighting against his wrongful abduction and it was agreed by the parliament that he could be repatriated to his kingdom state of Okobo. Jaja, now well advanced in age, longed to see his beloved Okobo land again. Jaja in the West Indies, Barbados and St. Vincent is a common slang for someone who is arrogant and carries himself or herself with an air of pride and dignity. Coined after the way King Jaja himself held his head up high while he was on the island. In 1891, Jaja was granted permission to return to Hobo or died en route, allegedly poisoned with a cup of tea in June. His body was shipped instead to the Tenerife in the Canary Island where he was buried. Following his exile and death, the power of Okobo state rapidly declined and the land was plagued with slave raids, riots, and the British exploited the land for its natural resources. After many years of clamor and protest, his body was properly exhumed and sent back to his beloved Okobo kingdom where he was laid to rest. His remains are now a sacred shrine behind the palace of the Amanya Yanabo of Okobo. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe, like and share this video to your network. See you in our next video. Thank you.